Although here's a cool thing to do. Um, if you're doing a big room song, do your first drop so it's just the kick, the synth you're using, as well as white noise. And then when you bring out the white noise, incorporate a new element. So that means have the white noise in your face maybe for four to eight bars. And then once it cuts out, bring in the hi-hats or bring in a snare. So it really gives it that change and then cut the white noise out completely. I think huh. a cool thing to do is keep people wanting more white noise. And especially one of my roommates out there, he's like obsessed with white noise. If you give him some white noise and it goes away, it drives him crazy because he always wants more. But he likes that want to get more. I think a lot of people do in the club. So it's really cool, a really good idea, production idea to to tease people with white noise because people love it. It sounds great on a huge system, but you don't. That's really don't interesting. I think that's something that, that is kind of, it's not unique to you, but I think it's something that we can learn from you, which is uh-huh. um, you have a perspective in the producer's chair and then you see the result on the dance floor as a DJ. Right. And, and in the same way, you also uh, can look at other people's tracks and see what works and what doesn't work and then take uh-huh. that back to the producer's chair. Um, and so I think that's really kind of a neat thing. So you're saying uh, white noise makes the crowd go nuts. It yes. seems simple. I mean, but, but not in every uh, – with big room house music or club music. Because you, if you do white noise the same way I did it in this track on like a heavy electro song, you're not even going to hear the white noise. You really only want to use it on songs that don't have that much going on. So you need something to give it more energy. Like um, – I don't know if I have a good example, but like, say you have a song that's just a bass drum and a tiny little synth underneath. It might be a really cool line, but it might not have an, enough energy to be the full drop. If you just put a huge white noise on top of that, it's going to fill in the space, make people go crazy. And then by the time you take it out, they're going to be so excited by it that the next element that you add to the synth line is just going to keep up the energy. Gotcha. That's a way it's, it's a good energy filler. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, there's another question uh, that just popped in uh, quickly. Yeah. They, they're asking, um, you say that you first twisted knobs, but you didn't, and then, then you decided to actually learn about what each knob does. And they want to know, yes. how did you go about that? Like, you had the desire to learn what each knob did, but what, how do you actually then figure out what okay, each knob see, does? That's a, that's a common question I get, like, on YouTube messages and stuff like that is, is there a book I can read or a class to go to? And I'm sure there's a bunch of great books and a lot of great classes, but I've never been a very academic person. So going through classes and reading books was never, or I I like to read regular books, but not like music production books. Nothing like that has sparked my interest. So what I did was I just, let's take a look at a Thor. I would be like, okay, I keep going back to this oscillator and I like how it sounds. And then I would search in the manual what this is i'll be like okay that's a sawtooth all right now i know what a sawtooth sounds like or this is the noise box that was obviously easy to learn and then these guys i was like okay i keep playing around with these but let me learn what they actually do so i realized okay if i take this a up it takes longer for the sound to come out and then i read oh this is called attack all right so attack means that uh there's going to be some how long the space is before the sound comes in and then decay i was like all right so decay is going to be how long the synth goes before it fades out. And the sustain is sort of similar to the decay. If you have it all the way up, the sound's not gonna fall out until the decay falls out. And then the release was how long will this note last if I just press it down? So I just, I learned, I learned just through playing around with it. So it was still trial and error while I was learning, but basically I, I was taking mental notes as to what I was doing frequently, what and why I was doing it until I figured out what it was. I don't know, but that might've been too confusing. No, I, but, I think that makes sense. Okay. Um, there's a, there's a comment. Um, yes. <laughs> actually, okay. So, uh, you know, Goonie uh, asks something. He says, "Question." That's not really a question, but I, there's a question implied. He says, "Jesus, look how long that rack is." Um, and and I yeah. think it relates to a question that came in earlier from someone, which was, "Do you have any tips on organizing a rack of that magnitude?" Okay. Uh... Don't take any organization tips from me. <laughs> That's that. Should we get your roommates <laughs> in uh, to uh, give their opinion on you and organization? I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to do that. I'm not organized. But, I mean, like, I know that a lot of you, – you don't invite them in. They're gonna yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I, I basically have – 
zero organization method. I don't label anything. I don't put anything anywhere. And it takes me forever to find something. But it works for me. I would recommend, and I, I wish I would do this, but I'm just too stubborn or always or lazy. I don't know. I would label every single thing you do. I would put all your drums in one section, then all your synths, maybe from the start of the song to the end. That would be practical. Um, but by no means, you can be disorganized and make a song. Like I, I, I obviously finish my songs. The organization has not held me back, but it does take me a lot longer than it should. So don't don't do it how I do it. And this is like, I know this is a complete mess. And that's just that's just how it goes. It's, unfortunately it's all right it's, if it makes sense to you it makes sense right yeah. so it's all good right um uh-huh. well this actually uh, there, I, I got one other question then we'll, and we'll jump on to anything else you might want to show us because we're thirsty for knowledge okay. but, um related to this i mean the idea you've got a lot of layers going on and uh i yes. think it was banana face uh wanted to know uh how much layering happens after the structure is written do you do you kind of get the structure of the song done and then add all your layers, or do you kind of add all these layers and figure out what you're going to do with it? Um, hmm. See, this is always, it's always difficult for me to remember how I write my music. Um, I think what I do is I start with, I'll, I'll probably just start with a normal house beat, uh, kick, clap, hi-hats in between or something like that usually it won't end up in the final version but just something to give me the rhythm for it and then i'll work on the main synth in this case i worked on that uh that bass sample with distortion and i'll layer until it sounds right i think if you're asking if i mix my tracks as i go or if i just lay everything out and mix later the answer is i mix as i hey, go. hey while we're on the subject me- uh there's been a question that's come up 50 bajillion times in the chat yeah do you mix in headphones uh, I do, I'd say, 90% of everything in my headphones, sometimes 100%. Cool. Um, and that's uh, that's due to two reasons. One, because I'm on the road a lot and I don't have access to my monitors. And two, because my room is a reverb haven <laughs> and is not, not easy to I'm looking to at a very lovely uh, standing wave parallel corner right there. Uh, a parallel <laughs> corner. You don't have a parallel corner, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. It's it's not it's not meant for uh, production, but I could make it a lot better. One of my roommates always pesters me about it because he's a sound engineer. Um, would, would that be I, Jet Set yeah, DJ I, saying I can I yes, can fix that? The, he's <laughs> yes, that's Jet Set exactly. That's, that's him. Um, yeah, so I do, but I mix as I go. A lot of people will will write their music, finish the song, and they don't care about the mixing at all. They don't care about the compression, the EQing, and they feel like they'll do it later. But what I do is I work on everything as I go. So by the time I finish my song, all that's left is mastering. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, no hesitation. I think we just answered that. Uh, mixes and headphones uh, more than studio monitors. So yeah. um, I, I've seen a couple of... Um, a couple of people asking about your uh, refill and uh is there a, a way you can point people to where it's at okay if you okay my site right now is a little buggy it looks like all the pictures don't work on it but if you go to dj www.djluckydate.com slash refills it'll direct you directly to the refill center gotcha cool and then and likewise yeah. youtube i mean is your are you dj lucky date is your youtube channel no, my YouTube channel is Lucky Date Videos. Lucky Date Videos, cool. Okay. Yes. Um, there's a couple. I've pointed a couple of people to those. Uh, some people have been asking you to build up sounds from scratch and stuff like that. And I think, right. given our time, not that we wouldn't mind just you know camping out all night and and watching this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, well, uh, you, you got you got it in uh, some energy to to do one more little something something, and then we'll. Yeah. Let me. Let me. See if there's anything more I want to do from this track, and if not, I'm going to go to a different track. Okay. In a second, I want you guys to listen to the white noise here, and you're going to hear, I'm going to take it out at various places, and I'm just going to do little spurts of white noise. Um, And that's what I meant by kind of cool little spray sounds you can make. And 
himself for the second try. Actually, Eddie, if anyone has any questions about that section, say them now. Or else I'm going <laughs> to a new song. I think that's. Uh, I think that's a no. While you move on to another song, uh, okay. question. Yes. Uh, there's one question. Question. You can. You can you draw you note slot or use keyboard. Uh, I think that there's uh, an analog delay on your keyboard as you're typing there, but. Uh, Therefore, no. Okay, I'm gonna skip that question because Rich one. I'm sorry, I didn't understand it. So, um. okay. Anything else? Or we move uh, on? Someone wants to know: Do you start with the drums first, the lead, or the bass? Um, totally depends, but usually the bass. I'll have some sort of drums to just give me a little bit of structure, okay. but. The bass is the first thing that I and, really and a, put my time. A couple people have asked. Uh, we don't know if you're even allowed to say, um, but they're curious to know if there's any uh, names that we would know that have, have used your refill. Uh, the names, yeah. Uh, some names that you guys might know are. Uh, you may have. There, uh, there's a song called "Like a Like a G6" by. Uh, Far East Movement and the Cataracts and their producer from the Cataracts uses my refills. Um, David Guetta has used my refills. Um, there's some huge German hit that had was like just taken directly from my refills. They even used the demo song I gave from it. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's been there's I, I'd say David Guetta is probably the most well known producer who's used my refills. Gotcha. Cool. Yes. All right. I'm gonna get out of here. As an as an aside uh, to people out there, um, yeah, the 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 producer you're talking about from the Cataracts, Niall Star, is also a uh, mm -hmm. Reason user, uh, Reason and Record, yes. I guess user. So yes, he is. Very. All right, let's. Do we want to look at Electro or do we want to look at Dubstep for the last one? Um. Yeah. Throw in your votes, guys. I'm seeing a lot of electro. Uh, oh, guys! Funny when the when the votes fly in, this whole screen just goes bonkers. Really? <laughs> so what are we doing? It, it looks to me like electro has trounced everything. Okay. This one's going to be sort of a complex, stro happy song. Okay. What and what what would right. how would we define complexstro? Complexstro is a term coined by Porter Robinson. He must have been so um, happy when he came up with that term. He must have been like, "Wow." <laughs> I'm sure he was. He he likes to emphasize that he was not the first complexstro artist, but he was the one to first make the name complexstro. Um complexstro has been basically just it's a it's a subgenre of electro uh, with Usually made by bass samples, but not always bass samples. But basically, it's a lot of bass lines into turning into one bass line. So it's the really, really choppy bass line style of electronic music. And I don't make much complex Joe, even though I've kind of been put into that team of people. I don't consider my music complex Joe. I, don't, I wouldn't even necessarily consider this complex show, but the fact that it has about six or seven different bass lines going on it, I guess, would put it in that category. Um, but yeah, let's let's dive in there. Okay. Alright, so actually I'm not even gonna show you any of the intro or anything, but it's not really built yet, but here's the baseline.
is. My oh like, my. You, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Now the main thing, so what I'm gonna show you is, I'm gonna sort of play you the break a little bit. I don't know how, this might sound like a total mess because I haven't been in this project in a while. But here's the synth progression that I'm gonna have some vocals over. <laughs> So then, if, as you can hear, if you listen to this bass line one more time, you can hear that synth line kind of going in and out of the bass line. Yeah. Every time you hear that synth, that's directly coming from the, that original part. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of making sense <laughs> when you're making complex show. My biggest problem with a lot of the complex show I hear today is that it does not make sense. And what I mean by that is it kind of just sounds like people are taking 12 different bass samples, not even worrying about what key they're in, throwing them on an MPC, having their pad, and just like clicking different pads for each one. And I think that that can sound really cool. But the problem with it is that it's not memorable because there's not a melody to it. And you don't always need a melody, but I think it's good to have something catchy enough that it's in your head. Because if you just have like, blah, 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 or something like that, you're not going to remember that. It's not, it's not catchy enough. Um, so, a question that came in related to that, actually, from uh, uh, yeah. Rish, Rish One. Uh, he wants to know, you mentioned that you're not the most musical, but how do you come up with those chords and melodies that we're hearing. I mean, they're very catchy and very cool. They're, they're just trial and error. Really? And when I say I'm not musical, it's not that I don't know how to make a good chord. It's that I don't know what I'm doing. So when I play a chord for you, or, or I guess I, I don't even know where the sense is, but if I were to play a chord for you, it might sound really cool, but I couldn't even, I could not tell you what notes I was playing or anything like that. So I'm not classically trained by any means, but from doing this for a lot of years, I have get like I can make chords sound good with other chords just from my head, but I don't know what I'm doing. I couldn't tell you what I'm doing. Gotcha. Okay. So for this baseline, what what I would do if I was gonna make a, if I was gonna tell you guys how to make a song that has a really cool uh, choppy baseline but still makes sense, I think the best thing to do is create a melody such as I did, any kind of melody, and then once you drop it into the baseline take out little sections of that bass line, I mean of that synth line, and add in bass shots or bass samples or just stabs of synths that are in the same key but are a different synth. So that way the line, set, it still has the same melody to it, but you're getting that crazy contrast of synths. Whereas, so it'll still make sense to the ear. So as you can hear, all of these synths are going to be in the same key as the main synth that's playing, but I'm just taking out the synth. So every time I point at the computer, I'm going to be like playing the main melody, and then when I release my finger, it's going to be a new synth coming in. So whenever my finger wasn't there, that's where I replaced it with a new synth, or a synth sample. I have more vocals, something like that. But I think it's really important to make sure everything's in the right key, and... Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it sounds complex, but it's not the most complex thing to create. It's actually really simple to create. There's like one of the bass things I put in there. These are all little shots I put in huh. there, um, at different, different times. Yeah, this one's the, this is the second set that comes in. Wow. Oh, and once again, guys, I did, I put white noise during the first part. I really want to emphasize this white noise thing. I know it's probably getting annoying. No, 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 no. <laughs> here's the white noise here, and, it's, and it's, it happens when it first hits. You always want that. I took it out right after those first two hits. So it's only on the first um, two beats, you're saying? 
Uh, of this song, it's only on the first two beats. It's right here. It goes like this. Then it's out, but it has reverb out. Wow. I mean, I think it's, I think it's great, and I don't think you're driving the point too much. I mean, you know, it's like okay. white noise is one of those things that if you if you're learning and you and you just pull up the noise generator on a synth you'd be like why the hell would i want to use that that's like that right. sounds dumb so i'll, I'll never use that <laughs> and and i think it's great for people to kind of realize that actually that's like a very important component to modern sounds you know definitely definitely very cool so yeah so are there any last last questions we want to take how lo- or is there anything about this song you want to do? A couple of questions about how I see. Oh, how long do you make your builds and do you stick to a minimum length? Um, no, I don't. Um, I don't. I think I, I would stick to a maximum length. I wouldn't go over a minute on a build. I think that's a minute is a little bit too long. A minute's not necessarily too long. Anything over a minute can be too long. And I think that people love crazy builds, but if you're going to make a build that goes on for longer than a minute, you might you better back it up with an amazing drop because it's really easy to make a build really, really exciting, but it's not that easy to make a drop that's exciting. So you could create this build that's like, you think the most amazing thing is about to happen. And if you don't counteract that with an amazing drop, then you just lost the dance floor. The dance floor is going to be let down. Okay. So I'd say make, if your drop is pretty good, if it's not that energetic, don't go over 15 seconds. If it's, if it's good, it has a lot of energy to it. Do about thirty seconds. If it's great, do a minute. But um, the less energy the song has, I think the shorter the build should be, and the less crazy the build should be. Like maybe the build, maybe build should just be a sweep up and a little bit of a drum roll. But if it's going to be a crazy drop, really add some reverby synths, add a lot of automation to samples and stuff coming up, make it a really big build. But the biggest problem I think people have with builds is that they make up the build better than the drop. And that's a. I'd rather the drop be better than gotcha. the build. Gotcha. So listen, there's yeah. a question that has come in um, the entire night, and I, I haven't asked it because I think it's a really simple answer. But I'm going to ask it in case. Yeah. What if it's the most amazing answer we've ever heard? So uh, David yeah. Choney wants to know what about what do you do about clipping? Do you just turn down uh, the master fader? Like, how do you prevent clipping? Well, okay. maybe it's, maybe it's not. A, maybe it's not a weird question. That's actually my question for you, for you or anybody. Is is it actually clipping if it's above that zero here? Um, which it uh, or is it clipping when it's above here? Well, oh wait, let me go to your. Let me look at your screen. Hang on. Is it is it clipping where where and where? When it hits at this zero. Okay. Right well, here? you're so you're looking right now in VU peak mode. So VU yeah. metering is different than peak. That you're mo- probably more used to peak metering. So if you hit that mode button a few okay. times um, at the bottom, wow, this is turning into a tech support session. Uh, there until it says peak peak, that's going to be a that's uh, okay. going to be a meter that you're more attuned to for like. So where 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 on this meter is clipping? Zero. Okay. All right, so I I guess I am clipping in all my songs, <laughs> but for some reason when I bring them into Logic, it's not clipping. Gotcha. Okay. So I, that's what I look for. I always master my songs in Logic, and if if they're clipping once I bring them into Logic, then I turn everything down inside. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, you know and the uh, just as another answer, as I understand it, this could be wrong. So nobody, I, I'm not a programmer. So I, but as I understand it, the audio inside of the mixer um, is all has enormous headroom. It's like 32 point floating bit. Blah blah blah. It's it's got a ton of headroom. It's the master fader when it all gets summed together, where clipping is ever an issue. You can you can crank the gain and the levels on all the channel strips till the cows come home, and it's not until it gets to the master fader before things you need to worry about clipping. So if if you want to just pull the master fader down, you'll you keep all your other levels intact. In you'll be fine. So anyway, cool. all right. Well, listen, um, Jordan. Thank you, thank yes. you so much. Um, I think this has been awesome, and I, and I can tell you from our uh, from the engagement in the chat and the the viewer numbers and every other way that uh-huh. I can look at this, we have just been uh, soaking up every every word and every minute you've given us. So awesome! Well, thank you so much for having me. I hope everyone enjoyed this and learned at least something. Yeah, and, I think uh, yeah. yeah. So the, the the big takeaway: uh, white noise is your friend. And uh, right, noise is your friend. and experiment and and get to know these knobs and and practice and Definitely. you know Definitely. cool. 
That's right. That's really great. Okay, well, thanks so much. And uh, everybody, yeah, do check you. out Lucky Dates Tutorials online because they are this good but in five-minute form. <laughs> so you can, uh, yes. you can check them out and learn really quickly. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's it for us tonight. So I'm just going to – let me just wrap up here. I'm going to uh, – let me just tell you guys, uh, we're going to be back. We're not on tomorrow night. We are going to be on uh, Friday night again with Dave Brown from Boy in a Band. He's going to be building us a uh, modern pop song. He's actually been doing it all week. In fact, you don't need to wait for our session, our live session on Friday to do this. You you can head over to uh, boyinaband.com now and see this track being built. Um, he's going to be putting up, I think, a video every day. And he's going to be showing you different elements of the song. And then he's going to come on with us on Friday and reveal the final song, take your questions, walk us through in a little more detail um, all of what he did. So uh, that's it. Otherwise, um, you know, standard stuff applies. Keep your songs coming. Tweet your songs to MMM Prop Songs or post them on our Facebook wall. And I... Every morning it's now like I come in, I check my email, and then I go to Twitter and I check the, the tweets and I, I look for your music. So it's, it's, it's actually far more fun than checking my email, believe me. So um, excellent. All right, guys, have a good night and uh, send your music because this could be you. What the fuck?